was a different meal yesterday, I promise. Um, yeah, Ted hates this part. I'm going to do the best I can. On your tables uh, is a bio we placed of, uh, for Ted Kircher and a little photograph and all the things he's done. I don't want to read it. I don't even want to paraphrase it. But I would like to uh, talk about some observations I've had, things I've, I've noticed working with Ted. Uh, and one is, his, Ted spent 20 years with the Scambia County School System um, in the public sector type of work, and then transitioned to the private sector. He's now the Chief Operating Officer and Vice President of Landrum Human Resource Companies, which is quite a transition. I and mean, you don't see it every day, that's for sure. And I, I'm impressed by that. Um, he's also an author. Uh, he's written publications and books and I read his book yesterday. It's uh, The Busy Business Owner's Guide to the Healthcare Reform, What You Need to Know. And it's a quick read, you know, about an hour or two. And it saved me almost $1,800. There's a tax credit in here for the new Affordable Care Act. So that book's worth a lot to me. <laughs> so I appreciate that, Ted. Just four thoughts that came to my mind as I think about um, things Ted, Ted Kircher has done. In Rotary, there's a history to it. Um, when you join Rotary, how many years pass, if you're going to be a district governor, how many years pass before you are? And I started thinking about that when um, I met with Ted. He became a Rotarian 17 years ago, and now he's district governor. That is fast. I thought, well, how fast? How does that compare to others? I looked at, you know, Bill Lyford. He's a district governor. 28 years. My dad was in the 80s. 28 years. Our past district governor is Ted um, Felder. 30 years before becoming district governor. Let's see, is John Tice here? Your very own John Tice. That was, uh, he was fast. Was 21 years before he from the time he became Rotarian to being a district governor. So Ted is a man with a mission. He's doing it fairly quickly, and I don't know if it's a record in the district, but it's, it's at the top of the list of, of quickly. You may also, you may not know that Ted was really the idea behind the Ethics in Business Award. He, he gained that idea, I think, from another district, a parallel concept, and worked with uh, Ed Nelly and put it all together, and that was a decade ago, and it's living well and it's still strong. That's a wonderful contribution to Rotary. Something he's done that people don't know. Um, future Vision. Ted is the person that uh, spent two years preparing for Future Vision, for the grants process changes on how clubs get grants. And he's going to talk about that a little bit. And it's a better system, and it works better for clubs, and it brings money locally. So all those things are good. Uh, I would say one of the things I've noticed most about Ted is he's a planner. He was talking about his district conference to me in February of this year. Uh, district conference next year, June. Okay, so he's, I mean, he had the whole thing scoped out and planned and thought through. So Ted is the kind of person, he's highly organized, master's degree in business administration. So that kind of makes sense. Um, his hobbies are running. He's, he's a marathon runner. He runs half marathons and teaches people you know, how to do the same, how to prepare for it and do it. And he has uh, three daughters. One's a Gator, one's a Seminole, one's an Agnes Scott Aggie, so he's a Saints fan. Right? <laughs> Please welcome your district governor, Ted Kirch. services. Ennis is doing Ball Harris Society work for us this year. Uh, 
Gene has helped with our membership efforts uh, this year, and Francis is doing inter uh, interactive motor act. So you've got folks in your club who are serving beyond your club at the district level. I want to thank them. I have to thank Britt Landrum. I haven't seen you much lately, um, <laughs> but thank you for allowing me to do this and for your support. And my colleagues at Landrum, and Andy and Jonathan and, and Sandra, for allowing me to do this for, you know, while I'm out and about. Juanita, uh, I haven't seen much of her lately either, but uh, thank you for your help and support. And one other person that comes to mind in, my, in your club, you know, we've had a very successful Man of Food project uh, here. In the last two years, we've probably had uh, somewhere over 150,000 meals per year. And that was because of the combined rotary clubs of Pensacola. But there was a point during the discussion about that project where it looked like that might not happen. And two club presidents that year came forward and, and told the rest of their, their fellow club presidents, we have to do this. One was Dale Deuce from Gulf Breeze. The other was Alan Bookman. And so, Alan, I want to thank you for your leadership among leaders to help get that project off and going. It's a big success, and so thank you for what you did there too, Alan. Uh, I've got a, a PowerPoint presentation for you. Now, um, David, David told me that I had an hour uh, for my presentation, so I promise I'll have you out of here by 2 o'clock or so. Uh, I promise you we'll, we'll be done by then. Uh, normally, at this point in my presentation, I tell a joke. Uh, I've been on your YouTube channel. I've seen some of the other jokes that have been told to open presentations here. Uh, I'm not sure that I really want to do that, but um, <laughs> but I want to tell I want to tell you a story that Lyndon Johnson used to tell. It was a story about some East Texas ranchers uh, and a guy from back east who was talking to these group of ranchers. Well, the guy was not a very good speaker, and as he gave his talk, he kind of began to kind of drone on and on, monotone voice, no personality in his presentation. So pretty soon these ranchers start patting their guns. This makes the guy a little nervous, but he keeps going. Well, pretty soon they're taking their guns out and they're putting their guns right in front of them. Well, that makes him really nervous. He decides to cut short his presentation. He sits down and he asks the guy next to him, he said, hey, am I okay? I said, yeah, you're okay, you're our guest. But I'd hate to be the guy that invited you. <laughs> so I hope you don't feel that way about David when I'm done uh, here with, with my presentation. Uh, but I'm going to talk to you about a Rotary year and what's going on around the Rotary world. This is Ron Burton. Uh, Ron is the president of Rotary International this year. Uh, Ron comes to us from the Rotary Club of Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, a great Rotarian, a great guy, and I think he's doing a great job for us. He, of course, is responsible for our theme this year, Engage Rotary Change Lives. What I like about the theme is it's an action theme. Think about your car. You can't move your car forward unless you engage the gears. It's the exact same way with Rotary. You can't move your club forward. We can't move Rotary International forward until we're engaged. We know it changes lives but it has to have our engagement. So I think it's a terrific theme and our theme for the year. Ron has three things he wants us to focus on this year. The first is membership. The second is the Rotary Foundation. And the third is what Ron calls the family of Rotary. So I want to talk about that from two, two different levels. The first is at the club level. Are our clubs family friendly? Is there a connection between our families and Rotary? It's important to young people that there be a connection between their service work and their family. If I brought, my daughters are older now, uh, Claire, my youngest, is 19, but they all grew up in Rotary. When Claire was eight or nine, actually as young as six, she'd come to Rotary Club meetings with me. Uh, she, she always enjoyed sitting next to Bill uh, at our meetings. <laughs> My kids went on service projects, uh, you know, with us. Uh, there was a connection between my family and Rotary. And I would ask you to think about that with your club. Do you, are you building those connections between your own families and Rotary? But then there are the things that we do in Rotary that are family-oriented. Uh, we have a scholarship house in Tallahassee. 
I didn't know that until July. The Rotary Clubs of the Tallahassee area for the last 60 years have supported a scholarship house primarily for young men going to Florida State. Now one of those pictures is from 1961. One is from last year. I'll let you figure out which one is which. But, but there's a great family of Rotary activity. It's been in our district 60 years. I had no idea it existed. Maybe we need to go to the University of West Florida, Madam President. Uh, but a great family of Rotary uh, event. The Rotary Youth Camp in Quincy, Florida. I think your club has supported that in the past. It's a chance for disabled children to have a summer camp experience. It gives those children a camp experience. It gives their parents and their caregivers some respite time. It's a great family of Rotary event that's right here in our district that we all support. The Rotary Youth Leadership Awards with Andrea that's been so active and involved in that project. She'll tell you, as I know, and many of you have been to those uh, experiences, a week, it's a weekend experience for high school sophomores. It changes kids' lives, but it's, a, it's an event right here in our district. Rotary Youth Exchange. Rotary is one of the largest student exchange programs in the world. We've got four kids from around the world in our district this year. We sent four out. But a great family of Rotary uh, experience that I don't think we talk enough about. Interact. I think you sponsor two Interact clubs here. Uh, I was an Interactor when I was in high school. Uh, great to introduce service uh, to high school folks. And then Rotaract. Um, six months ago, <coughs> we had one Rotaract club in our district you know, over in Lake City. In the last six months, we have one at the University of West Florida now. We have one at Pensacola State College. We have one in, about to start in Panama City. We have a community-based club in, Tal in Tallahassee that's about to start. So we've gone from virtually nothing to having activity all across our district now. It tells me young people want to serve. And what better avenue of service than through Rotary? Uh, the International Convention is going to be in Sydney in June. Uh, if you've not been to one, there's nothing like 20,000 Rotarians from around the world, all in the same place at the same time. We had 160 countries represented in Lisbon this past summer. Uh, it's a great family of Rotary event. It will be even more so under President Ron's leadership this year. Uh, it's going to be in Atlanta in 2017 uh, to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Rotary Foundation. So it's, uh, if you've not been to one, you really should consider attending one. Closer to home is a district conference. It's going to be May 9th and 10th here in Pensacola. It's been over 20 years since the last time we had it here in Pensacola. I really want to ask you and encourage you to come out and support the district conference. Um, if we, if we have almost a thousand Rotarians in Escambia and Santa Rosa County. If you'll come out and spend part of your weekend with us, have some fellowship, learn a little bit about Rotary, bring your kids and grandkids, uh, we can make a big difference in, in the way Rotary is perceived. Now, of course, you all know what that is. When I'm in Williston or Trenton or Branford, they have no idea what we can offer in Pensacola. So part of what I'm doing is promoting Pensacola as I go out and talk. We're going to have some events uh, at the museum on Saturday. We're going to start Friday night at the, at the Wahoos game. Uh, we'll have uh, Rotary ball caps uh, and Wahoo uh, ball caps for the Rotarians that come out. We'll have the party decks rented. Uh, the Wahoos will be wearing, hopefully, Rotary uniforms that night. Uh, we're going to auction off the jerseys to raise, to raise money for Polio Plus. But that's how we're going to kick off our conference May 9th uh, out at the ballpark. We'll be at the museum on Saturday morning. Um, and then we're going to spend part of the sessions next door at the Flight Academy. Now again, if I'm in Cross City, they have no idea what the National Flight Academy is like. And so I explain to them, you know, what all is going to be involved. But we're going to have a chance for Rotarians and their kids and their grandkids to design, to design missions, to control the missions, and then get behind the wheel of the flight simulators and fly the mission. So I want to see President David behind the wheel of the X-12 there. Uh, flying the simulators out. Uh, but that's going to be all part of our events on Saturday. Saturday afternoon is free. We'll have golf at AC Reed if you'd like to do that. We'll have VIP tours of the museum, of the lighthouse. Uh, and then Saturday night we'll be at the atrium for the governor's banquet. So again, it's going to be a family of Rotary event, May 9th and 10th of next year. I hope you'll come out and support, support this so we can show the rest of the district why the 
district conference is, is worthy of being in Pensacola and why, uh, what the, all the good things that we do uh, across our district. So family road is the first activity. The second one is membership. It's the second thing Long wants us to focus on. As you know, we have about 1.2 million Rotarians in the world. Ten years ago, we had about 1.2 million Rotarians in the world. In the last 10 years, we've inducted about 1.2 million Rotarians. We do a pretty good job of attracting Rotarians. We do a lousy job of keeping them. So I would ask you, first as a club, to really understand why people join your club. That we do as much listening as we do talking to new members. I think we oftentimes make the mistake of thinking, if we just get them busy, they'll stay. So a new CPA joins the club, and we all go, great, we got a new treasurer. <laughs> well, maybe they join for service. Maybe they join for fellowship or networking or something else. So we need to listen to our new members and understand why they're there, why they're here, and then what we can do to help meet their needs. And the second piece about membership is the part that you play. So I'm going to ask you a quiz here. Raise your hand if you remember who the Rotary International President was the year you became a Rotarian. All right. Raise your hand if you know who the district governor was the year you became a Rotarian. Roger, I hate to ask that in front of you like that, but again, this is just part of the thing. I have a couple of hands go up. Sometimes I get to induct new members, so they go, oh yeah, it's you, that's who it was. All right, third one. Raise your hand if you remember who your sponsor was. You can have a bigger impact on somebody's life than a Rotary International president Roger, I hate to say it, a district governor, if you simply invite somebody to come to lunch, let them see the good fellowship and the good work that you do here, you can have a far bigger impact on their lives than a Rotary International President or a district governor. So that's, we have the family of Rotary membership. The third thing is our Rotary Foundation. Uh, David mentioned the foundation changed up this year. You know, we give money to the annual fund. Three years later, that comes back to us. Uh, we have a lot more control of that money now than we used to. And let me show you what happened as a result of July 1st. We have 29 clubs that apply for district grants. They, those 29 clubs represented 24 different projects. Four of them were international, but 20 of them were right here in our own communities. So to say that the Rotary Foundation does good work around the world, that's absolutely true. But because of this new grant structure, the Rotary Foundation can do good work right in our own communities. There's 105,000 people that, that benefit from those uh, projects and $104,000 in project budgets. So this, this new foundation program gives us a lot of flexibility, a lot of opportunity to do good things in our community. And I think it's worthy of our support. The other big foundation pro uh, project, of course, is Polio Plus. Um, it's hard to read from this, from this uh, distance, but the graph on the far left is the number of cases of polio in 1988, not long after we started this effort. In 1988, one single year, there were 350,000 cases of polio that year. 350,000 cases. You know where we were as of two weeks ago? 259. We have made remarkable progress in the fight against polio. We're down to the three endemic countries that Ennis uh, mentioned, Nigeria, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. But to show you why it's so critical that we knock this disease out once and for all, they think that one individual caused polio to hop across the African continent this summer and cause an outbreak of polio in Somalia that had formerly been polio free. So we've got to finish the job. If we don't finish the job all around the world, uh, then the world is still at danger 
uh, with polio. There's a price that's paid, though, for polio that, that I don't think most Rotarians realize. Here you see uh, Charlene from Dunwoody, Georgia, uh, helping to administer the polio vaccine. Uh, we have a lot of, rodeo, uh, of, of, uh, of Rotary volunteers that go around the world and help do this. But there's a price that's paid, and I'm going to ask you all to stand up for a moment. Please stand. This is Roxini Bibi. Roxini is kneeling at the grave of her 18-year-old daughter, who was murdered in Pakistan in December. What had her daughter done? She was administering the polio vaccine to children. We have had 20 workers killed in the past year. They've been murdered, uh, 10 in Nigeria and 10 in Pakistan, only because they were trying to save a child from polio. So I'd like to ask for a moment of silence. I'd like to ask you to remember those 20 workers that gave their life in the fight for polio. Thank you. The great thing about the BB family, they lost a child, their own child, to, to murder, yet they said, if we don't vaccinate the children of Pakistan, who will? So they're still with us in, they're still with us in the fight. We've got the Gates Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates. They've already given us $405 million in the fight against polio. That's how much they believe in us and what we're doing. And they've got a challenge for us now. For every dollar that we give, it'll become $3. They'll match every dollar with $2. So Ennis's very generous gift today uh, will become $3,000 in the polio fight, thanks to the Foundation. So we're almost there. We truly are this close, but we need to finish the fight. And I ask for your support to help us in the fight against polio. Finally, I want to close with a story about my year as club president. Uh, Jack, you'll recognize that that was our that was our theme that year sow the seeds of love i got so much grief from my club about that theme <laughs> as i'd go around sowing the seeds of love you know with my club um, but i want to tell you a story about how a chance meeting led to a difference in a child's life it's june of 2002 uh, this is before the days of smartphones if I wanted to check my email, I had to line up in this big long line at the convention center and wait for my turn to get to a computer so I could log on and check my email. And the guy in front of me was a president-elect from California. And we're talking about our year as president, what we're going to do, and how we can liven, you know, liven our clubs up. And he told me about a new member club. I liked the idea. I took it back to my club. I got everybody in my club who had been in Rotary less than two years. And I said to them, look, I don't care what you do, but I want you to pick a project, I want you to fundraise for that project, and show the rest of us, more seasoned Rotarians, how it's done. Some of you may know Trisha Woodburn. Uh, she was one of, those, one of those new members at the time, and Trisha helped, helped lead the fight. They selected foster children as their cause. Lakeview had just become responsible for foster kids in our community. Uh, they approached Walmart. Walmart meant for every dollar we raised, Walmart matched it with a dollar, and we bought Walmart gift cards for foster parents. But I didn't appreciate the power of that until they came back, Lakeview came back to thank our club. And they told us a Christmas story. December 22, 2002, Ted Carroll Jr. was five years old. Ted lived in Jay. He was playing with a kitten in his backyard. The kitten ran next door to an abandoned house. Behind the house was an abandoned pool. The kitten fell in the pool. Ted went after the kitten and drowned. When children and families came out to investigate uh, Ted's death, they ended up taking Carissa, who was nine, and Nicholas, who was four, Ted's brother and sister. They took them from the family and placed them in foster care on Christmas Eve. Now the foster parents said, we weren't expecting these children, we're not prepared for these children. And that's when the Lakeview worker pulled out one of our Walmart gift cards and gave it to the parents and said, here, go out and buy Christmas presents for these children. 
So it was a chance meeting in Barcelona that led to some hard work from some new rotarians in my club that made a little bit of a difference in an otherwise tragic field of Christmas for Carissa and Nicholas. So whether it's something big that we're doing in Rotary like polio or something small like making a difference in a child's life, I just ask you to join us. Join me, join President David this year, get engaged. Let's get out there and engage Rotary and change lives. Thanks. Let's give another round of applause. For this.